Hello and welcome to this video review of G-Lock Air Battle for Nintendo Switch. Now this is another of those vintage arcade conversions by the surely now legendary M2, who have been doing a phenomenal job porting old Sega games to Nintendo machines for many years now. The rather strange title refers to Loss of Consciousness by G-Force, which is something that can happen to fighter pilots when they manoeuvre so fast in their jets that they lose consciousness from the gravitational force of the centrifugal load pulling their blood from their brains. Lovely. But I must admit, this is one classic Sega game that I've never played. Well, that's not strictly true. I have played the Game Gear version, which I do love, but I'm not sure that counts. This is the real deal. This is the arcade game from 1990. So what we have here is a more serious counterpoint to the much more widely loved Afterburner. You still fly a white jet fighter over rapidly moving terrain, and you still fire your Vulcan cannon with one button while locking onto targets and firing missiles with another button. Again, like Afterburner, there is a speed up boost and then a further Afterburner mode for when you want to go really fast. Here, however, speed does actually reduce your fuel level, and while I didn't run out in the whole time that I've been playing it, I should imagine that expert play demands significantly more use of that system than I've used it, so it must be limited for a reason. Either way, you can get through the game without using the afterburner that much at all, except perhaps for outrunning some of the dogfighting scenes. Also, unlike Afterburner, the lock-on system here requires pretty careful aiming, so aligning the crosshairs over the enemy fighter and waiting for the red lock-on signal and the shout of FIRE before unleashing your missile for an assured kill. There's also much more danger of hitting scenery than there is in Afterburner, and the biggest challenge in the normal mode comes from remembering not to swing the stick from hard left to right, as this causes a barrel roll, and that will usually send you careening into the side of the canyon if you do it by accident. On hard, however, the control is more realistic, as you control the pitch fully, and that does take some getting used to, but it feels pretty good once you've got it right. It's actually a very simple game to understand once you've got all that sussed out, but being an arcade title from 1990, the action scenes all take place in extremely rapid succession. Missions actually only last a little under 15 seconds each, which by today's standards is nothing, yet somehow here it feels like plenty when you actually play it. The breather between missions is welcome, as it's a very intense experience. And I like the way that you can continue just by simulating putting in another coin, although you'll need to unlock the ability to pump in more than a few credits after the first couple of plays. Personally, I like the initial limit as it encourages you to learn the game's workings, try harder and do better. So when it does all click, this is another great Sega arcade title. I can see why it never really reached mainstream acceptance, but Sega were kings of the arcade during this era, and that still shows here in what is arguably one of their more mediocre arcade offerings. From a graphical point of view, it's definitely ropey by today's standards, as the 3D effect is all achieved through clever use of 2D. Even the landing sequence, which must have looked absolutely incredible in the couple of years prior even to Virtua Racing, is achieved with 3D effect sprites, and the camera shift out of the cockpit for some dogfighting scenes is rather quaint, being as it is just more sprites drawn to look like 3D. But again, this must have looked insanely good 30 years ago, and is still pretty cool now. Even so, the scaled sprites don't always match the movement of the floor, and the floor's scrolling itself isn't 100% convincing, though there is a decent sense of height and speed, and I like the glimpse also of the Nazca lines near the start of normal mode. It's a really nice touch, but I do wish that the game did more little things like that. I wish it had a bit more fun with itself. Being a conversion by M2, of course this Switch version has got plenty of display options, such as a vintage filter that simulates the CRT with scan lines and blurring, though if you just activate the blurring mode alone, everything looks pretty poor actually. I wouldn't recommend it, it just looks blurry. The simulation of the cabinet is a nice touch, though I'm sure the original had a sit-in 360 degree version, and I can't see how this would actually go upside down. Still, whether on a TV or in handheld mode, the smooth frame rate and frantic flurry of sprites is still pleasing on the eye, even if it is a bit messy at times. There is however one very big addition that M2 has taken the time to develop, and that's the new Ages mode. Now the team has started doing this recently, adding a new game mode to a beloved classic, and this one I gotta say is a standout. 
It takes everything that the main game does well and ramps it up, so that means more enemies, denser ground troops, and a much swifter lock-on reticule, which makes for a genuinely exhilarating experience. I mean, I managed to finish this mode on my second attempt, having spent several hours with the main game, and I must say that I noticed the adrenaline pumping through my veins when I finally slowed down to input my initials on that rather awesome typewriter name entry screen. I have to say, this is a surprisingly enjoyable game, and it fits the Switch beautifully. This kind of pick up and play arcade immediacy is perfect for handheld play, and the online leaderboards and usual replay options make for plenty of potential for mastery if you want to really get into it. As for me, I'll just line it up next to Virtua Racing, Space Harrier and Outrun, and I doubt it'll ever leave my home screen for too long. It's another superb conversion of a vintage arcade experience, and while I can see why it isn't deemed a classic, and it's been pretty much forgotten by history, I think it should have been remembered a little more fondly. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that I prefer g locks gameplay over Afterburner 2's. I know that's probably sacrilege, but I'm, listen to what I'm saying. Even though Afterburner has the superior aesthetic and charm, this game has deeper and more deliberate gameplay. So, given that the price of these Sega Ages games is so low, I see no reason to discourage you from picking it up. So I give Sega Ages g lock for Nintendo Switch a very well-earned 4 stars. Well, I hope you enjoyed that review. Please hit like and subscribe, and take a look around my channel for more gaming videos, as well as music videos, including a video diary as I self-produce my third album, which is called The Ghost Train. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon. Take care.